The big recession is coming. The bank crisis combined with the Fed's increasing of the interest rate could be bringing a recession in the next four months. What does this mean for crypto? The FUD is already starting. Will we see optimal prices by the end of the year? And what coin has explosive 63x potential that is a low risk coin? All of that and more coming up in today's video, starting in three, two, one. It's beginning to look a lot like a recession every time Powell speaks. <laughs> Would you like to learn? Is the crypto bottom going to be coming in quarter three, 2023? Are we looking for the ultimate bottom to be coming by the end of this year? And why? Also, the crypto market is now experiencing that FUD. Do you remember last week when I said that currently there is no FUD on crypto because it's all about the banks? But it's starting. And what does this mean for the impending midterm? Also, what cryptocurrency that is a low-risk cryptocurrency has the potential to 63x? All of that and more coming up in today's video here with me. The Superman, your superhero of 100 to 1000 X gems. It feels like a long time since I have been able to call one because of the fact we have been in a bear market for well over a year 
and it's likely we're going to be in a bear market for another year anyway. So, I am hoping that all the crypto coins I've been talking about are going to have good long-term potential because that is the type of cryptocurrency I'm interested in. I'm not interested in low caps, not interested in cryptocurrencies that probably give me a 10, 20x. No, I'm not interested in the shite multipliers. I am interested in, uh, in investing at a bulletproof price, a price that's never going to be seen again, investing for one cycle and making at least a 50x but target of 100x with some that could 1000x. So if you love what you hear, make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already. There's now 120,000 subscribers. And when I came back to YouTube from Twitch, I had 114,000. So I appreciate all of you that have actually come and followed me anew on YouTube. So if you could do me a solid and quite literally, while you're watching, if you're watching on a desktop or if you're watching on mobile, just tap that like. Done. It's done in seconds. Do you see that? I did it in literally seconds. And if you want to make sure that you are here live for my videos, make sure you turn all notifications on so that you will be notified. YouTube should give you a notification. So there is, as usual, a lot to talk about. So before I do that, I want to say hello to you guys for uh, for turning up basically so who have we got we've got proud and real Dijan and also I want to say this you being here allows me to look at what you're interested in and seeing what the potential is of what you're investing in because with your knowledge because at the end of the day I am one person with all of you guys watching you can let me know what are the cryptocurrencies you like I can analyze them and I can see if I like them and maybe I want to go in on them that's how I have found you know, some cryptocurrencies during this bear market. So make sure that you give me, you know, decent suggestions. No shit coins, okay? No coins that are going to be, you know, dregs. Coins that are going to undoubtedly, you know, be eradicated come the next bull market anyway. So, Proud and Real, Djan, SEO, Vic1000X, Dan Dan the Crypto Man, Sasar, Abdi, Chris, Lindsay, Caesar, Glinbert, Chris Marks. Mohammed, Decav, Reed James, Alonso Vega, Amy, Ayub, H Bag, the Cuckoo's in the Nest, James Van Halen, Chris, Joe Mems, Jason, Joe Mems, Joe Mens, Carl Haig, Julian, Taken, Dario, Patrick, Jiminy, Let's Go Crypto, Big Boss Raza, uh, Mwizwa, Z Miza, Muiza, Joe Bars, Night Ghost, Hurricane Hicks, Mivek, Nico, Yefri, Angie. By the way, if you're watching this on playback, then just skip about 30 seconds. Nick's Creatives, uh, Joseph Cull, Plan C, Giroto, Akineo, Tobes. Quentin Lewis, Mosa, Sold as Seen, SK Dashcams, Naked Trader, Wolfie, Outback Crypto, Giroto, CO Genuine, Boxing Fan, Edge Key, Akori, Gasan, Wolfie, High Monk, Happy Silver, AM, Aristoteles, Cat, Cat Saros. Nice name. Bit of a tongue twister. Tim Yabra. Mango Juice. FK, FK, U, FC UK side. <laughs> Viv, Brandon, Sheb, Archie. Right, people. There's a lot to cover. So let's cover it. But ultimately, what's happening right now is a lot of cryptos are on the downer for the last 24 hours. So if we have a look and Bitcoin, Bitcoin has gone down nicely. So... Even after Fed Powell's, Fed Powell's, Jerome Powell's interest rate hike of 25 basis points yesterday, Bitcoin went down sizably but came back up. So it went from 28.7 or so down to 27, 27 and then it went back up to 28. 28.3 it's been on still for most of the day 
and now it has shot down a thousand dollars. Ethereum is also on the downer, having seen even even today over eighteen hundred dollars, and Coinbase as well. Now Coinbase uh, had a large sell-off yesterday. We're going to be talking about that, and that is basically a prelude to what I believe is going to be taking place. So I'm going to start, first of all, with the crypto stuff. So first of all, we've had Coinbase given a Wells notice, which is essentially an intention by the SEC to uh, to, to sue, I suppose. So, um, so anyway, SEC issued Coinbase warning the exchange that identified potential violations of US securities laws. And Coinbase said the, more, the warning wouldn't mean any changes to the exchange's current products or services. The notice is the second warning from the SEC to a crypto entity after a February notice to stablecoin issuer Paxos. So they're going after the biggies. We've already seen Paxos essentially indirectly means Binance. And we have already seen a lot of Binance FUD. We've already seen, you know, d attempts to discredit CZ, Binance, Reserves, etc. Now, going after Coinbase. And there has been some, I suppose, some shenanigans going on with Coinbase. So they actually, so Coinbase executives have actually been selling off Coinbase stock prior to the actual announcement of the Wells Notice. So it just goes to show they, they probably knew about it and were able to, I suppose, cash in beforehand. So various senior executives, including the CEO, Brian Armstrong, are amongst the sellers of Coinbase at higher prices. So just so I've heard I was watching a stream yesterday from the Coin Bureau where he was saying that we should be uniting in solidarity behind Coinbase. I don't agree. I don't think we should be uniting because... They have they had an opportunity to sell off before everybody else got kind of screwed on Coinbase. So what's the lesser of two evils? You know, you, in a way, this is this is something we have been expecting anyway. We saw that shots were fired by CZ to Coinbase a couple of months ago when all of the FUD around Binance was happening and all the reserves talk was happening. And he was saying that they probably didn't have enough reserves because Grayscale held them and Grayscale are in trouble. So this, this was always likely to happen. Now, I have seen people who are whales exiting Coinbase. So they have been sending. I've seen the activity in wallets. I have been seeing because I track a load of whales. And I have seen that a load of whales have been sell, sending their cryptos off of their Coinbase wallets into their MetaMask wallets. So this has Put the frighteners on big money. Just in, Binance US to get Wells notice next. XRP lawyer claims this. The global digital asset industry is, co industry is constantly in the crosshairs of the SEC. Gary Gensler-led commission on Thursday issued a warning to the crypto exchange Coinbase in the form of a Wells notice. After this development, XRP holders lawyer in the Ripple lawsuit, believes that exchanges might receive this warning ahead. Um, as per the lawyer claims, yada, yada, yada. He also added that crypto exchanges like Kraken, Binance US, Binance, and others have also received a Wells notice. And if not, they are likely to get one soon. This is from a top class lawyer. Now, we are already seeing Binance uh, receiving some FUD. This was a article that came out yesterday. So crypto is banned in China, but Binance employees and support volunteers have been telling people how to bypass the ban. So it essentially looks like a hit piece that may fuel arguments for you should go after Binance next. So we have got the beginnings of FUD happening in crypto. Finally, the FUD is coming back into crypto. And I think it's just a sign of things to come. Yeah, this is going to be a rapid dismantling. The momentum has shifted. The greed is no longer in abundance. It's gone from 68 to 61 in a couple of days. It's really cooled, but I believe that there is way more to come. Now, what is happening as far as the Fed 
is concerned. So are we to expect a bottoming soon? Well, my belief is yes. My belief is yes. So Jerome Powell said a rate pause was considered due to bank issues. So as I said in the last stream, the Fed are looking to keep rates high for 2023 and not and not bring rates down. Okay, so rates are con uh, we're looking to be high for 2023 and the limit of 5.25 is very very close now. We're at, we're at 5% interest rate. And they were considering due to bank issues pausing the rate. Now, today we have had Deutsche Bank shares tumbling. Uh Deutsche Bank one of Europe's Largest lenders is getting pounded Friday as traders price in major risks from an expanding US banking crisis. So their shares slumped lower Friday after contracts designed to insure against any default on its debt surged amidst concerns that the region's second largest lender will be pulled into the re recent market maelstrom. Credit default swaps on Deutsche Bank debt, which allow an investor to pay a regular premium to ensure their debt holdings against default, jumped the most on record Friday as shares extended their slump for a third consecutive session. So we've had Credit Suisse and we've now got Deutsche Bank. Now, if you have been watching me over the last months, I covered this. So the ones that looked at most risk were Credit Suisse, Deutsche Bank and Barclays. I showed you the list at the time. I haven't tried to look for that list, but those were the three lists. And what are the ones that are now in trouble? We've seen Silvergate, Sil uh, Silicon Valley Bank, a Signature. Uh, we've had 186 banks at potential risk. And now Credit Suisse. So we had the second largest uh, crisis or second largest um, entity, which is Silicon Valley Bank. Now third... Credit Suisse, now Deutsche Bank, what's next? Now Deutsche Bank, this is at, the, at this present time, this is speculation that they that, that the, the current banking crisis is extending to the banks seen most at risk. And as we covered a few months ago, Credit Suisse and Deutsche Bank were at the most risk. And Credit Suisse and the UBS are being investigated currently. For how that sale has gone about. So it's just there's just a never-ending shitstorm, essentially. Now, basically, in the financial market, the biggest risk now, fund managers see the biggest risk from this banking crisis, the biggest threat to the market in 2023. No longer the pandemic and anything else, inflation, it's the banking crisis. They're seen as the biggest risk to the market. And we're only beginning to see the dominoes falling. And we're seeing more dominoes, and we will likely see more dominoes falling, particularly with regards to cryptocurrency, regulation, etc. So anyway, let's have a look. So we'll look at this. This is where I am gleaming. We are going to be going into a recession in quarter three, 2023. Okay, so previously I said quarter one because of likely a uh, reversal of inflation. Inflation was coming down. Inflation has begun. If we look at the PCE of last month, inflation has begun to reverse. If we look at the CPI figure, that was showing that inflation was coming down. Okay, but for next month's figure, which is happening in, I think, the 14th of April, that is going to be arguably the most anticipated and potentially the most harmful across all financial markets. Bear with me a second. Let me just make sure my phone is off. So anyway, so given that, there is predictions now for the next Fed meeting and the next Fed funds rate. So if we have a look and see what is predicted for May. So what's predicted for May? 85% believe there's going to be a pause. So I think this is a belief that the, the market is trying to price in the banking crisis. And with that, they are predicting, seeing that Jerome Powell was going to pause rates due to banking issues, is that they will pause. Okay, so their target is 5.25. That was the target that was originally set. That's the target they're going for. So what the market believe is that they are there's only a 14% chance of get, getting up to another 25 basis points in the next Fed meeting on May the 3rd. 
and a very high likelihood of a pause. I think that's what's going to happen. Personal, personal opinion. In June, they are expecting, again, a 58% chance of a pause, with a 37% chance of an increase of 25 basis points. So I'm guessing this is because next month is going to be hairy, and the month after, they may have, they may have, they may have solved the issues. But there's a high likelihood that they're going to, again, remain paused. And then we come to July, and this is where it gets very, very interesting. 50% is expecting a 25 basis point decrease. So, in essence, a pivot. The opposite of what the Fed said were going to happen in, in 2023. So, the likelihood is, in, Ju in July, is, is that we may see the pause go down to a reversal of increasing the interest rate. Now, let's have a look at some history. Every time the Fed freezes is the point just before a recession. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's just go through the years. So this is 1959. You see the rate, the interest rate was going up. Pause. Look, it went from four. It was hardly going down. And then once they actually started going down, once they started decreasing the interest rate, bang, recession. These gray lines are a recession, okay? So it's white everywhere, except for these gray vertical lines. These gray vertical lines equal the recessions of the past, I suppose, 60, 60, 70 years. So here we are again. Pause, decrease, recession starts. Increase, decrease, starts the recession. Increase, decrease, starts the recession. Again, here, frozen, decrease, recession, Frozen, decrease, recession. That's 2020, 2020, uh, 20, uh, 2001. And then the biggest recession, the one that I think we are going to mimic this time, freeze, put, um, go, uh, reduce the interest rate, recession. And this recession lasted 18 months and caused the stock market bottom. This bottom, oh, great. Thank you very much, uh, coin <laughs> trading view. So let's go back. I did have it on the right page, but they decided to uh, be a, be make me look stupid. So anyway, yeah, so here we are. So this, let's just have a look. No, that's not what I wanted. So they paused rates in between July uh, 2006 to 2007. And then in around about September is when the uh, recession started, essentially. Recession started at this point when they started to decrease in 2007. But what? In September 2007. But let me show you something. So what's happening now is we are seeing what looks like a version of quantitative easing. Okay, so whilst the Fed have been bringing down their balance sheet. Now we are seeing an injection into the balance sheet. So the Fed printed $300 billion to save the bank, to save Sil um, Silicon Valley Bank, essentially. And the likelihood is they're going to print more money to save other banks. Now, if we have a look back to 2008, look at this, right? So when there was an emergency bailout, for the banks in 2008, when the shit really started hitting the fan, and this was in the middle of the actual recession, um, when that pivot, when they were injecting money to save, so this emergency fund that was authorised to help bail out banks, when that was authorised and then they started pumping money in, that, you would think, if, if this is a repeat of that exact incident, Right, because they had an emergency Sunday meeting two weeks ago to to think of a plan to save Silicon Valley Bank. They printed money, and people were thinking this is a good thing for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. But actually, what happened the last time they did that to save banks? Not this. This is quantitative easing. This is printing money, putting it into the economy, giving the average American more money because of the pandemic. 
That was quantitative easing. This was not quantitative easing. This was a bank bailout fund, right? Now we have a look and see this bank bailout fund, the Emergency Economic Stabilization Act of 2008. This was authorized in October 2008. October 2008. So they initially... This Emergency Economic Stabilization Fund was rejected in September 2008, but passed a revised bill the following month. All right, so this was to stabilize the economy after the, well, as the, pand as the banking crisis was happening. All right, so this was allowing them to print more money to, to save these banks. It happened in, in October 2008. The exact point, this happened, look, the exact point, look, October 2008, Started printing the money. What happened in October 2008? This happened, right? So this was a this was a base support level that the S and P 500 was holding, and in October 2008, that was the moment they broke it. That was the moment they broke the system, and that was when, in just a couple of months later, a few months later, that we saw the bottom for stocks. Now that was at the time, okay? But what I'm showing you is is that two incidents happened. They lowered the interest rate and they pumped money to save the banks. Both of those things caused for the break the base support to be breached and for a new bottom to be hit. Now we'd already been in a recession from around about here. All right? We'd already been in a recession, but it was the point at which the interest rate really started to go down and the money was being pumped to save the banks. That was the point that the market bottomed because that caused massive crisis. It caused for a panic widespread. And what we've got right now happening is we have got that injection starting amidst the potential for us to actually start decreasing the interest rate. That spells recession. Recession is coming quarter three. It seems. Quarter three. The banking crisis is exacerbating the likelihood of a recession. The banks are out of money. They have these emergency credit swaps, credit line swaps, uh, because they needed to bring more money into America. So they had a meeting with global banks to get to get credit swaps with other global banks to bring more dollars into the US because they're running out of dollars to be able to to satisfy the banking crisis, to be able to satisfy the, or have reserves to pay for those that uh, are switching banks, taking their money out. They need to make sure that they can, that these, that the average everyday American can redeem their funds from a bank and move to a, a bigger, safer bank potentially. So what's going on in crypto right now, attacking the stable coins and making you feel like even the best exchanges, Coinbase and Binance aren't safe, the best stable coins, USDC, BUSD, um, I hate, I, I hesitate to add USDT to that, uh, making you feel all of that is not safe, you kind of think, where do you go? So short term, it's been Bitcoin, because that seems like the safest, it's the one that's not under scrutiny from the SEC, it can't be because it's a class as a commodity. But everything else is a big, big risk. Big, big risk. So there is a impending crisis coming for the stock market particularly. The stock market is going to get hit hard. It's going to get hit hard this year. And that is most, mo more than likely going to extend into next year. Where we are saved in the crypto market is we've got the halving next year. And I believe that that is going to inject positivity into the market. Uh, before the stock market actually gets a chance to climb to roughly the same degree. This is going to enable for banking institutions to be able to get in. Okay, it's gonna, it, this is what's going to happen. Right? This is what I believe. I believe this whole thing, this, this whole choreographed move is all a way to get people going via banks. Centralised banks. Not not allowing people to operate in the Wild Wild West, which is what we call it. Binance, Coinbase, other exchanges, other fiat on ramps. No, they want to take. They want to eradicate the crypto on ramps. They want to make the. They want to make crypto investors of the future go through banks. 
And that is what's going to happen. And that's this whole move. And it's only just started. So patience, essentially, is what it boils down to. Patience. You just got to be patient. You just got to wait. It can be annoying, but you've just got to wait. There is going to be a point that crypto is going to bottom. And the thing is, is in the cryptocurrency market is that people, they want things to happen now. They want things to happen immediately. They want it to happen already. And it's just, that's just not how it works. How it works is you've just got to wait. If we go back and have a look and see how Bitcoin uh, acted back in, uh, back in 2018, 19, Right, you had to wait a long, long time before the second bottom. All right, the second bottom that came and was violent. And remember, this was not in a quantitative tightening world. It wasn't in a bank crisis world. It wasn't in a highly inflationary world. The highly inflationary world came as a result of the second bottom. But you know, the previous, the previous all-time lows, the previous you know two bottom events that happens in a cycle. Uh, were in much more straightforward markets, much more liquid markets, ones where really only crypto went down, but the stock market continued to rise. So my expectation is, is that the contagion coming out of the banking crisis is going to send Bitcoin down to a potential much more severe low than what we have seen so far. And that's where I am seeing this happening. Okay, kind of end of 2023, 2024 is kind of where I see that you're going to get the bottom of it. And then after that, it's just going to be a case of recovery. But that is that is what we have got waiting to come to us. Right, okay, let's have a look and see what you guys are saying. And if I could just make another reminder, if you're watching, there's 484 of you watching, which is okay, not bad. It's Friday night. A lot of people, I imagine, are out. So if you could... Quite literally, be a beauty, be a darling, and just smash that like button. See it animate in front of you. It's a beautiful sight. Why not let yourself see it? Right, okay. Let's have a look and see what you guys are saying. I want to I want to see what you guys are saying. Are you still Carlos V, thank you very much for the 199. Are you still holding your NFTs? Thoughts on CGG? Thanks. So I am still holding, yeah, my NFTs. The thing is with NFTs, you can't really sell them, right? It's a pretty illiquid market. Unless you hold Bored Apes and CryptoPunks and Azukis or, and, uh, you know, things that are blue chip, Bored Ape, Bored Ape Land and all that, you can't really sell anything. So you just got to hold it and just hope that the interest comes back. But I'm not a big NFT investor. I've got very few NFTs, to be fair. And the ones that I have got are constantly, constantly, constantly getting offers. They're just not high enough, in my opinion, so I'm not going to bother. As for um, Chain Guardians, well, I've not really been in contact with them. They've obviously got very low volume, but that is an effect of, you know, the market generally. You know, Bitcoin is, at the moment, the strongest. and Out of everything, it's the strongest, and it's still looking weak. The momentum has stopped. The momentum of it going up the st has stopped. The bulls are exhausted. They've been trying to get Bitcoin, you know, safely and consistently to close over 28.3 and struggled. So everything else is going to be struggling even harder. Chain Guardians, you know, this, this definitely had its heyday last bull market because it was kind of a mixture of, it was kind of like, it, it very much replicates Axie Infinity, very kind of similar game, similar uh, reward mechanism as a gamer. But Chain Guardians recently have Chain Guardians has recently. Let me just delete that. Chain Guardians have recently brought out something called the Cryptoverse. Is it called the Crypt? Yeah, called the Cryptoverse, which is a version of Decentraland. So I know a variety of influencers. I was going to be one of them, but I decided against it in the end for, to buy land in the area that was. Yeah, probably the most attractive was $25,000. And that was at a discount. So I was like, nah, I'll keep the stables for the bear market. But um, Chain Guardians is likely to come back. A lot of gaming tokens are likely to come back. These guys had decent investors. But what I will say is, is that you're going against the tide. If you're already holding Chain Guardians, pointless selling at a 5 million market cap. This uh, is all-time high. 
Uh, I always do that. This at its all-time high had a market cap of 90 million. And it was that was that's quite low, actually, as a, as a market cap. That's quite low. Uh, and that, and you know, we are way off that right now. You are... <laughs> Basic maths fails me. 18x off of that uh, market cap high. So, to me, pointless to sell it if you already hold it. And to buy it, I would wait, obviously, if you really like it. But again, you're going against the tithe. It's a, it's a 2021 coin. It's mainly partly exposed. This wasn't around for the full trajectory, bottom to bull. But it was there for most of it. It came out early 2021 on Polka Starter. So, you know, there's a lot of gaming projects now. It, there's there's 23,000 cryptocurrencies. They've got a good team. They have great investors. But, you know, I'd probably go for something a bit sexier, a bit newer, personally. But I personally still hold some Chain Guardians. I sold a lot in January. Um, but I don't really have many now. Um, Min Gary Park, thank you very much for the ten pounds. Bought into Hex at the recent bottom and now in some pretty decent profit. If it was you, would you sell before the Pulse launch and DCA into Pulse over sixty days, or hold Hex to get a copy P Hex um, on Pulse? Uh, personally, I'm not. I wouldn't sell. You know, my measly investment is now worth over a thousand dollars in Hex, despite the drop today. Uh, yeah, my my investment in Hex is, is over $1,000. I only put like a 100 and something in. Uh, and I'm not selling it. Uh, n not really to have the Pulse Chain snap, the P-Hex snapshot. More because I'm taking a long-term position on it. And selling it at 10x when I think this is going to exceed a dollar, easily exceed a dollar in the bull market, I'm just going to keep what I've got because I bought at the bottom. So, or the latest bottom. I think it's going to go lower. Uh, is it going to go to the 0.009? It'll be tough to get that, to go down that badly. But it's a low liquidity coin. Anything can happen. A few whales could tank it. But we'll have to wait and see. But um, I personally am holding it and I would stake it. Doge War Moon with all of Elon's tweets. Thoughts? Uh, yes. But the ceiling is not going to be very, very high. So from a 10 billion market cap, there's not a high ceiling for Doge. But it is going to go, it's going to go up, undoubtedly. It's probably going to, I would say, probably best case scenario, 15 to 20x. Okay, so 10x would be 75 cents. That's basically its all-time high. Uh, with actual adoption, it should realize that. And also the fact it's the, me it's the main meme coin. A lot of people that follow Elon Musk will, will invest in Doge. But it needs a lot. At this market cap now, it needs a lot. It needs a huge amount of sustainable volume for this to really move up. And it won't 100x. It can't 100x from its current. It can't. This isn't going to be a $7 coin. But what I would say is this could go to you know $1.50, maybe $2. Um, probably $1.50, I would say. And for a sub with circulating supply that big, I mean, that's an ask. But it could definitely happen. We'll have to wait and see. My personal opinion is to get into something that will be brought up with Doge Coin, and that would be Doge Chain. It's similar to like with Arbitrum at the moment. Now, what a lot of DGen influencers are doing is they're looking for Arbitrum plays that fit. You know, instead of investing in Arbitrum, invest in the coins that are on the Arbitrum chain. And you'll probably get a decent multiplier. So I know that's going on at the moment. So that is a good opportunity right now. Let me just make sure I don't miss any super chats. Because I saw in the last stream I did. Uh, Vito Woo Network. Uh, yeah, Woo Network is, uh, is, is relatively decent. Woo Network is, uh, it's like, it's like GMX. It's just outside the top 100. And from what I can gather, this is a relatively deflationary coin as well. So they haven't got the percentage here, but it looks like it's about 70% in circulation. But from what I've heard, they burn 
tokens a lot on this network. So it's got deflationary properties. Let's have a look at its all-time high. It's all-time high 164. It's not even 10x down from that. That would be 16.4 cents. Yeah, it's not even 10x down from that. So it's not gone down a huge amount. It's good. It's good. Do I like it? Again, it's a it's an oldish coin. But with exchange coins, with deflationary mechanisms, it's got a very high chance of surviving. You know, because it's got a to it's got a constant token utility. If you're going with a gaming coin from the last cycle, and this is quite a major coin, then like it's gonna be kind of forgotten amongst the flood, and newer coins are sexier. With Woo Network, you know, decentralized exchanges, they're hot. And with you know, SEC targeting cryptocurrencies, decentralized exchange is going to be a, a more valuable commodity. So thank you very much, Vito, for the 20 BAM, whatever that is. Charles MacGyver, $5. Thank you very much. Why is Zen and Jenny running today? I haven't actually looked. Let's have a look. Holy shit. Well, look at that. This is a huge run up from the eight. Yeah, I, I said this was very likely because they found very good support in this eight. So what it looks like is it looks like a bit of a pivot from Hex to Zen. I don't know about Jenny. Yeah, this is up today, isn't it? 20%. Decent volume. So let me have a look at Rex just to confirm. Okay, maybe not. But then Rex is a pile of shit anyway. I've never really considered that and a competitor. So they're very like for like with Hex. So I'm imagining that people have taken their gains and they're like, oh, what should I do with this? Should I put it into stables or should I put it into, you know, Zen Crypto, which has only been dropping lately. And that is probably what has caused the cash injection uh, into Zen. So 3.35 is when this started rising. Mm, which coincides roughly with the time that the hex started falling, I suppose. Yeah, so it kind of it kind of marries up. Uh, thoughts on anchor? Anchor was really sexy in DeFi summer uh, in twenty twenty one. It's pretty decent. The volume's excellent. You know, the volume's about six to one. That's high. And it's still just teetering on the uh, top 100. Liquid staking. That's very that's very in right now, liquid staking. I think people are looking for any opportunity to stake their cryptos uh, with flexibility, basically. So, yeah. So, mm, I don't know any new partnerships. Anchor Partners with Microsoft, Tencent. I mean, they're huge. So, uh, those, those are good partnerships. I mean, they're two big companies. And I think Anchor was already doing fantastically as a as a value proposition anyway. If you're into your staking, this is great anyway. A lot of the this is it's kind of like getting the rewards of staking without having to set up nodes with difficulty. And this was quite influential with being a being part of ETH2 staking. So that's probably a reason why these partnerships, but like with what happened with Meta and Polygon, which is that partnership is kind of like gone by the wayside because of you know recent recent turmoil in crypto. Then don't ex yeah, I would expect that if there's any st if if staking becomes a problem with the SEC, that these could back out or whatever. So yeah, I I personally wouldn't I wouldn't touch anything right now. I just think that the prices are going to be so much better later down the line. Labs Group and Landshare, no, they're shit, man. Um, how far, but thank you for the 249 euros. Uh, thanks. Uh, thoughts on how far GMX can run? I don't think, I think that the GMX is, is really had its, had, had its uh, main appeal in the lead up to Arbitrum because GMX was a way of interacting with the Arbitrum chain so that you could get the airdrop. Now that Arbitrum's come out, people got their airdrops, people got their, their token balances, claim token balances, then GMX serves much less interest. It's not quite as, as sexy now. So I think that now GMX is going to be on the come down. Later on, I think this is going to do well. I think Arbitrum's going to do well. 
So later on, I think it's going to do well. So I personally would, because this is basically the fastest decentralized exchange that exists. And it's one of the fastest growing, tons of users. So I would be looking just for a better entry and it's nowhere near it right now. I would be looking for it to go down to $20 before I was even considering an entry in it. Been hearing a lot about LCX and XDC. Who use your shitcoin radar to detect any BS super man? Uh, LCX, is that um, Luxo? Oh no, LCX. Uh, I don't even know what this is. Digital Asset Resolu Revolution. The future will be tokenized. Join our compliant token sales. I mean, to me, this sounds just a lot like, uh, like Convergence. It doesn't look like anything to me. It just looks a bit shit. Not interested in it at all. Um, what's the other one? XDC. Yeah, please, people. Brilliant suggestions would be uh, definitely recommended. XDC is one of those ISO cryptocurrencies, isn't it? So it's likely to have a speculative value to it. Uh, low cost, fast, yada, yada, yada. Enterprise grade, open source, blockchain protocol, EVM compatible, enforceable smart contracts, uniquely suited to revolutionize, decentralize, and liquefy trade finance industry. Yeah, I mean, seems pretty good. I'm not. I'm. Uh, there's a lot of these, and I've got, I've got a lot of money. I've got a lot of money in some of these fast transaction blockchains, or is due to be deployed into them. So you kind of have to be a little bit, you know, different. I'm not really quite sure what these guys offer that's different. Let's have a look and see how engaged their community is. I should imagine pretty engaged for a top top 100 coin. Whoa. Zinfin. Oh, Zin. What the fuck is Zinfin? Oh, it's called Zinfin. All right. Um, 503, that's pretty epic. That's a pinned tweet. 9,000 for nine for 100,000. 9,000 is it's about average. It seems real anyway. Yeah, 87. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, obviously decently engaged. I think a lot of the ISO 20022 interest has kept people actually interested in this. Um, I dare say this will be very difficult to see how many hodlers there are. Hmm. Eight hundred and seventy-eight thousand. Fuck me, that's a lot. Not huge, not huge, huge. I mean, it doesn't compare with Aptos and uh, things like that, Polygon and all that. It's, it's pretty shit, but it's decent though. It's decent. Are there any others? I think they're all um, on. They're all on chain, and I think the one we just looked at was the main on chain explorer. So. Yeah, I mean, it looks looks okay, actually. I don't think this is a shit coin as such, but is it an exceptional coin? Yeah, so this is this is average, I would say. Very, very low volume to market cap ratio. It's like, a, it's like 100 to 1. That's terrible. So, well off. Um, BSC pad safe, trying to be a blue diamond for the next bull run. I don't see why it's not safe. I mean, you know, BSC pad is basically Bluezilla's main launch pad so if this if, so, if, if anything was wrong with this then everything would be fucked so this is this is safe i've been using bsc pad now two years i used it for the last one i used it for ai pad so yeah they're good they're decent you know is that a guarantee they'll always be decent not necessarily but i'd see no reason to distrust it it's common dead project yeah it is uh, let's have a look and see anything else. GMX, $20. Come on. High hope, wishful uh, prediction. Well, no, not necessarily. I mean, GMX in the last, what? In the last 52 weeks. Okay, let's not look at the last 52 weeks. 30 day lows, 53. All right, we're coming into a recession. The Arbitrum heat has got, has subsided. So I don't see why $20 is, is, it's not that bad considering the turmoil like he's come to the market. Um, 
Wow, the LCX bods is following Super on Twitter and Super doesn't even know. Why would I know? <laughs> like, I, I only, I, there is a certain amount of confirmation. There is a certain amount of investor bias in what I talk about, right? So I will typically give the best feedback in something I either have, want to buy. Um, yeah, that, that's it. If something I want or have, or uh, sorry, something I have or plan to buy. You're going to get the best feedback because I, these are already on my radar. And there's there's already quite a lot of coins in that camp. So I'm not going to be looking at shitty coins when there's 23,000, you know. What's your favourite on Arbitrum ecosystem? Uh, my personal favourite, and this is, uh, you know, this is a, a preferential thing, is magic. Magic to me is, is sexy as hell. And I'm loving this drawdown in the price you know this was a dollar just two weeks ago two weeks ago today this was a dollar and it it doubled and now it's halved that doubling so it, it's got more to come down you know it's obviously coming down with with bitcoin the market simmering there's less greed so uh, magic's my favorite this kind of combines everything i love which is kind of gaming games development the whole play to earn industry, Arbitrum, it's new, relatively cheap, not quite cheap enough. I would like it under a dollar. That makes it in an optimal kind of area, you know, for the best gains. But this is a one a rank 114 coins. So there's 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 better there's better potential coins out there. But I do like this one. I want to hold this one. And I don't think that we've quite seen I don't think we've gotten anywhere near the ceiling for this coin either. The best it's ever done, $6.31. How long ago was that? A year ago. All oh, right. Excellent. Right. Um, yeah. So there's a lot more spaces to go down, maybe to about 55 cents. It'll go down to its dollar and then lose a bit more during this recession. What you've got to remember is I believe that this recession is going to be pretty long. It could be long winded. So if we go back to the S&P, have a look at what we were looking at just a bit, just earlier. Uh, it took the stock market many, many years to refine this all-time high after a recession started. So look, starting from end of 2007 to the beginning of 2013, six years pretty much. About five and a half, six years of recovery. So... There'll be a bottom, another bottom, another bottom. I could definitely see that happening. When the recession is announced, that caused the bottom. And then it went up and then it, it further bottomed again. So the bottom tends to be uh, after recession's announced. And it may not be necessarily a quick process. So by that logic, I think magic could go down. could be obliterated. <laughs> Especially with the arbitrary. Again, there was an incentive to buy this because... It allowed you to be part of getting the Arbitrum airdrop. And that's now subsided. So Magic, I expect to cool down a lot. Uh, will it go below 100 million market cap? Probably not. But I like its tokenomic. 61% released. It's pretty strong. Um. Oh, wow. Hold on. Can you please have a look at Jasmine? I saw I saw Jerry Banfield talking about Jasmine. He did a video on it, and uh, it did. It, I I still kind of maintain. Just look at the website. The website is really a piece of shit. You know, uh, that's not everything, but it doesn't really. Do, it just it doesn't really do much for me. You know, it just kind of to me just seems like. It's a high liquidity coin. I mean, it's on a it's on a load of the top exchanges: Binance, Coinbase, Kraken. It's it's where the whales are. Those are the three exchanges where the whales are, uh, and Bitfinex. That's where the whales are. So it, it naturally gets a lot of a lot of money injected into it. But you know, to me, it's it's not interesting enough. It's probably good, but to me, it's just not interesting enough. Just outside of a ten to one ratio. I think it's overvalued, but that's my own opinion. Um, let me have a look and see how many hodlers there are of this. I don't think I've ever actually properly looked. 
46 thousand is terrible are there any more cha is this on more than one chain no it's only on ethereum let me just have a look 46,000 okay so this is position 144 let's have a look and see uh the next the next one mm. oh look at that the moon bee. right so let's have a look at this explorers let's do block scout 3.9 million wallet addresses actually let's look at subscan that's a little bit more down to earth 1 million hodlers. And it's about the same market cap as Jasmine. Look, so 228 million. We look at Jasmine, 223 million. So virtually the same. And this one only has 46,000 hodlers. So to me, uh, it seems like a no brainer to me, comparatively. Uh, more people are interested in Moonbeam, more people hodl it, more people will market it. So Jasmine, I just, I've never really been that. I've really never been that bothered about it. Do you think Boom Mo Beam Swap is the best Moonbeam de decks? I I don't know. I've not used Stellar Swap, Beam Swap. I've not used any of them. Um, two hundred forty k market cap. That can't be true. What's the Ten thousand hodlers. That's yeah, that's pretty decent, you know. For that market cap, that's pretty decent. Yes, that's not bad at all, actually. Um ten percent in in circulation. Not great. Now let's have a look at Glint. Oh, that's the same thing. Um Stella. Stella swap. This is another moonbeam one. Wow. Fucking even worse. So let's just get that and have a look on the Moonbeam scan. 8,000? Oh, no one. 9,007. That can't be true. Look at that fully diluted supply. They have not got this right. But if that was right... That is ridiculous. That is that will be the low officially the lowest. That's one dollar per hodler. That's ridiculous. That shows you know, tremendous undervaluedness because the average is about four thousand. Four thousand dollars per hodler is a decent amount. So one dollar a hodler is. That is ridiculous. So they're both pretty undervalued, is, is, is what it boils down to. Stellar swap and beam swap. But, um, you know, if you think Moonbeam's slow, beam swap will be even slower. So Moonbeam relies on Polkadot to move. So Polkadot moves, Moonbeam moves, and then you rely on Moonbeam to move to make the exchange related to it move. So it's too much you're relying on for a big... It could have a huge run-up. It really could. But uh, and if and if Moonbeam does what I'm expecting it to, it's that uh, you know going into the top 100, then I would expect a good uprise for Beam Swap. But as a personal fan of Moonbeam, I couldn't give a toss for it, <laughs> and that's from me. Brilliance is Simo Cinnamon for CC launching Dev Tool in seven days, playing Central Intelligence for DeFi. So. Thank you for the five dollars, though. But that to me doesn't really sound like a decent value proposition. What the fuck is Simo? That's no, not even out. Is it? Oh, it's wait. Hold on. No, what the fuck is this? I don't even know what what what, what the question really is. Okay, so it's already out. Basically, launching a dev tool in seven days. Right, I thought it was launching in seven days. Uh yeah, this looks like this looks like a pile of shit. Fifty two watch lists, absolutely no one cares. Two hundred and fifty six hodlers. What? 
That's probably just the team. Smart contract with the asset could be modified. Yeah, I would not trust any token like this. Pile of shit. Next Creative, thank you very much for the one euro. Did you have a question? Um, and Vijay Shankar, 7 uh, did you have a question? Oh, here we go. Next Creative, what do you think about ordinals? Not a lot at this point. I think that what you've got to kind of... I mean, it's a growth area. It's a new category of cryptocurrency. But I haven't really done a whole lot of research into ordinals at this point. Ordinals fees spike as Board Ape Yacht Club clones bloom on Bitcoin. Yeah, so there looks like there's opportunities, particularly because in Bitcoin... Bitcoin's so behind the times, it's kind of always really been seen as a store of value, as a currency. It's not really been seen as having any utility other than that. So Ordinal's kind of busies up the blockchain even more, requiring probably more hash rate. It's not, I don't know if it's necessarily a good thing. I don't know if it's necessarily a good thing for Bitcoin to have Ordinal's. But it's definitely a growth area, you know, it's, it's early... When it's early, it's typically a good time to strike. But uh, yeah, NFTs doesn't really interest me at the best of times. So, and oh, Dojo Sheep, I didn't really see it. Any, I didn't really like it. Grower's choice. How would you deploy a hundred k in this market? Well, I wouldn't deploy it yet. Put it that way. But um, I think that I have talked a lot about you know, what I would buy, and there's various lists. This is the main one, the bear market hit list. If I had 100k, I mean, the ones that I really like are Aptos, Near, Algorand. Uh, I like Optimism, but it's too high at the moment. Moonbeam. I like all of these. So 100k, I'd pro if I had 100k, I would probably go into five coins five five to ten coins depending on how you know how indecisive i was because it's just so much but um i think in my latest short uh not my latest my second to last short where i was saying five coins i'd go all in on that's what those were, were what i would choose so algorand aptos moonbeam near hello and i think there was one other Oh yeah, wait. Aptos near Algorand Moonbeam. Maybe there wasn't another. I don't remember. But I would want to definitely have some new coins. So I would have Hello. I'd have Oasis. Possibly Alice It depends on how much it goes down. So, uh, yeah, I hope that answers somewhat your question. Liquidity. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably the wrong person to ask a, a DeFi coins. It's not, it's not really my area. 91% uh, in circulation. Let me have a look at the 0% interest loans. Total value lock, 702 million. That's, that's a high amount. 110% collateral ratio, so you can borrow. Yeah. <laughs> What's the? You got Polychain, Pantera. They're pretty. They're they're sexy. And they're on Coinbase, Gemini, and Huobi. Uh, I thought that this was. Largely, uh, lending, borrowing, staking, that kind of thing. But I don't know what the... Oh, hold on. Rewards. Issuance follows a yearly halving schedule. That's pretty good. So it becomes more rare over time. It has got a max supply, which I like. But I don't really know what the... Uh, 
I don't really know what the the yield is. Ten thousand hodlers. Rank hundred and fifty five with ten thousand hodlers. That does not seem right at all to me. That seems really shit. So it's probably good from a. Uh, uh, it's probably okay. It's that it's it's got a near two to one ratio, so it's clearly trending. People are loving it, and it's massively down from its all time high of forty eight dollars. Holy shit, twenty four x down pretty much. Uh, Jasmine has even been delisted last week from Binance US. There we are. Uh, what? Joe Bars, you beauty. $50. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Wow. You are very much appreciated by the Supo man. And I am, I am transmitting to you positive karma for the next ball run. When you're generous... You get it back in rewards. So I love that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that a lot. Wow. That's, that's, super, that's supreme. And not even asking a question. Just simply saying, um, for all your hard work, which is really sweet. So thank you very much. I love it. I love it. That's sweet. Uh, Asa Carson. Any thoughts on Mez? Thank you very much. Well... That's an interesting one, isn't it? I know of a YouTuber, I'm not going to say who, you may know who, um, that bought about $100,000 worth of this coin. Uh, what the fuck is this? So it gives you all the links, but without... Oh, hold on. Maybe you need to click into it. No, nothing happened. So I know a YouTuber that, that really got into this. And I think it's something to do with NFT. It's like NFT meets DeFi kind of thing. I think. Mez token is a utility token for the Mez platform, which doesn't bloody load. So that's pretty shit. Um, yeah, here we are. Yeah, a DeFi platform for users to engage in the acquisition and liquidation of NFTs and other crypto assets through bidding back collateral extension. So it's just a way of using NFTs for, uh, for, uh, you know, loans. What it boils down to. And it seems like it's done. Uh, with, with, uh, and you still be the custodian. So it seems like a. It seems like a. No, I wouldn't say decent value proposition, but certainly something different. So like I said, yeah, I know of a YouTuber that that bought a shit ton of this. Um, oh, only in the last couple of days has it had a run-up. And I think that they bought at like $4 or something. Yeah, about $4. So they've made quite a lot of bank from that trade. But uh, I'm not sure if it's sustainable. I mean, if you look at the market, 230, uh, 2,100, 2,300, 600, 668 hodlers. That is so super low. It's one of these addresses anyway. But it seems like a decent distribution-ish. There's no large hodler. I mean, there is one ten percent, but um, yeah, it doesn't. It, it, yeah, but it's not my kind of thing because, as you know, NFTs and DeFi are not my thing. But it 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 seems relatively unique. But you know, you can't really get anything from it. Look, you can't other than reading the white paper and looking at a, a roadmap. There's nothing other than that. Yeah. So, but it's 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 a good way of enabling DeFi with things other than stable coins or um, LP tokens and things. This is using an NFT. It's quite simplistic. So, in that respect, it's okay. Would I buy it? Let me have a look again. I mean, what I will say 
is 6 million market cap and it's by a YouTuber that has got an incredible amount of reach. So I would say apparently 100% in circulation, only a 1 million circulation max supply. Uh, this could, this could, this could shoot. It really could shoot eventually. And how old is it? I'm taking it as very new. Yes, very new. 2023 coin. So other than the price, uh, it would seem to actually correspond with everything I would look for. New coin, outside the top 500. Uh, it's non bull exposed, but it's not. And it's a narrative play. It's DeFi and NFTs. They're they're two decent narratives. I wouldn't say they're the sexiest narratives, but they're two decent narratives. But the token price sucks. So that's why why I probably wouldn't touch it. But there is opportunity. It's a, it's obviously very, very new in development. There's opportunity for that. So I just don't like the price. You don't feel like you're getting a lot for your money. Put it that way. Uh, oh, here's a great question. Pap, uh, Pappy Check. I totally agree with you regarding the recession. Why don't other people see it too, like Joe Perry's or Jerry? Uh, I don't know. I mean, if you look through... I mean, the thing is, is that... The, I may not be right. They may be right. You never know, right? They may be right. You know, at the end of the day, we're all putting, putting forward our personal views. The thing is, is that I am bringing a lot of information to justify why I think... The recession is coming. You know, the metrics that seem to correspond with the past, what brought about the 2008, the banking crisis, and a bailout, which basically is like the beginning of what happened in 2008. So I bring a lot of information that should justify my reasoning, but I may or may not be right. But it's all depending on what you're looking at, how much experience you have, how long you've been around, and, you know, the, the kind of investor you are. I, I see if if you watch, um, there's one YouTuber who is one of the biggest in the space. It's not Coin Bureau. Uh, one, one YouTuber, and it's not BitBoy. <laughs> one of the biggest in the space that is permeable. And it really, really irritates me. <laughs> and I was looking at his live chat the other day. I was watching the, the, the FOMC meeting through that person's stream. And the, 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 the emojis and the bullishness and they were just completely done completely done all wanting a moonshot and i just kind of think that there's there's so many in this market that kind of just gravitate towards that kind of content i personally hate it i gravitate to what i would bring a big oh thank you very much for the 199 i appreciate that right okay um, Elon Musk has created a new coin called Vault Inu. I don't know how you come to that conclusion that Elon Musk created it, but let's have a look. It's not his. Elon Musk, please tweet the word Vault or Lightning Vault emoji if you know Vault Inu. He obviously doesn't. It's obviously not his coin. So I don't know why anybody would think it was. But um, I don't really know the origins of Vault Inu, though. I don't know how it kind of came about. Yeah, I don't really... I, don't, I, don't, I just don't get it. I don't understand what is the, what is the, what is the narrative here. Vault is a supercharged Inu reviving the true crypto spirit. It's a new meme coin, but it doesn't have a narrative. It doesn't have something that is super duper commercial. So I have no interest in it. Upcoming ZK Sync pro uh, projects to outperform Layer 2. I wouldn't necessarily say they'll outperform Layer 2, but they'll certainly be good projects. So StarkNet and ZK Sync are the ones that I really know. Um, obviously, you've got a few contenders you've got like aleph zero you even got crypto gpt that are kind of zk projects um uh, immutable x um 
Uh, oh, Mina, of course. Mina, Fine Dora. There's quite a few in the ZK, ZK uh, Snarks or whatever field. I think this needs updating. But, uh, yeah, there's quite a few. But um, if you really want to make them, I'd go for Starknet. It's probably the one that looks the sexiest. Moonwell got X Coinbase. Yes, Moonwell. Listen, that's not a bad one, you know. Moonwell was uh, a DeFi. Which one's? Which one is it? Moonwell is kind of like a, a Moonbeam DeFi. Let me have a look and see how many hodlers this one has. Three thousand three hundred. That's not that great. This is come. This is this gets absolutely obliterated even by Stella and Beam Swap. That's not a huge amount. It's it's on par. It's on par roughly with its market cap. I would say. Eight hundred and fifty nine dollars a user. Now, to me, that's this is a pretty shit deal. Again, it relies on Polkadot, then Moonbeam, then Moonwell. So it's one of those ones that could do well. Yeah, somebody in the chat's got it. No, it's not Crypto Banter. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but people who are permable really just piss me off. Just like people who are permabare, I imagine that pisses the permaballs off. But, you know... Every permaball I know has essentially got everything wrong except for two events in the last year. And that is the the jump up in price in January and Bitcoin going to 28k. And I wouldn't even say they got that right. It's just they're just jumping all over it. They've said that it's bottomed enough times that eventually it's got it's right. But when you say it 100 times, why do people follow these people? I just don't get it. This is stupid. It really is ridiculous. I agree with Richard Hart. You know, like the most followed, the least followed people, like in the 100k range, are probably the ones that talk the most sense. McLaren or Ferrari? McLaren, for sure. Uh, the ideal would be a McLaren Senna. Following that, a McLaren 720. Following that, probably a Ferrari. If it's the Enzo, but that's about it. I'm not, I'm not a massive Ferrari fan. Borsch, hi, thanks for all you do. The $20. Thanks very much, Borsch. That's a sweet gesture. Any thoughts on Impulse X? Impulse X, all it really requires is marketing. You know, Jerry Banfield did a video on it about two or three weeks ago. Uh, no, it's probably a bit more than that. Probably about a month ago. Did a video on it, 3X. Had quite a lot of interest. With these coins, it just needs the marketing. And I mean, these guys have been doing okay. The, the website definitely needs improving. That's the same website from a year ago. Has it changed at all? Mm, no, it hasn't really changed at all. The website is, is not different. Uh, maybe this bit's slightly different, but it would be because it's the... But what I would say is, is, is that this just needs better marketing. It needs way better marketing. Basically, ImpulseX is a DEX for Pulse chain. And yet, with HEX going up, this has not followed suit. So quite clearly, the market is not pricing this as a Pulse chain related asset at all. You know, so that's all it needs. It, they need, and the thing is, is and this is, the, this is the brilliant thing, you know, Pulse Impulse X was originally called Pulse X. They got it. They nailed the the name. You know, Pulse X is is one of Richard Hart's dexes. It's got dex. It's going to be the dex of Pulse Chain, and Impulse X actually came up with the name beforehand. The thing, the thing that was unfortunate is is they didn't get the .com. They got PulseX.io. They should have got PulseX.com. And then they, then Richard Hart would not have been able to take take claim because PulseX.org would have been shit. 
So the PulseX.com was available. They didn't they didn't get it, unfortunately. But these guys actually were called PulseX originally. So the fact that Richard Hart subsequently called his decks PulseX is a quite is a good is a good tip of the hat to ImpulseX. Nailed it on the name. And they are a they're, they're not just a kind of uh, you know play to earn game, which is what they are looking to bring out. They are they are DeFi for Pulse Chain, DeFi decks for Pulse Chain, Hodler rewards. You know, really, it's, it 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 just need better marketing. This needs to be seen as intertwined with Pulse X, uh, with Pulse Chain. And the problem with this is is that Richard Hart knows about them, and he just slagged them off on Twitter. So. It's, it's, it hasn't helped. But it can do well. It can do well over time. And they've just recently brought out uh, an NFT character of me, an NFT character of Jerry, and an NFT character of Joe uh, Joe Parry's. So, <laughs> they really are quite fantastic. 5,600 is not a bad amount of addresses. The mark has 1.391. Three nine one. Two hundred forty-six dollars a user is is, is 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 quite undervalued, I would say. So it's good. I like the sex authentication at the end. What was that? Uh oh oh right. Well, I was talking the person I was talking about. Um, it's got to be TMG. No, it wasn't TMG. N nobody really watches him. <laughs> Sorry, TMG, but it is the truth. Will ETH break 1515? Yeah, I think so. I think ETH will event eventually come down to about $800, $900. I know it sounds really implausible at the moment, but I expect for the SEC heat on staking coins to ramp up I, the shanghai event is happening soon as well and that's going to probably lead to you know that is that could be a bullish or a bearish event but my personal opinion is depending on how the overall financial market is which is very unstable at this point it could actually lead to a massive liquidation event so that could bring Ethereum right down. And I think it will. I do, I do think we will see a sub $1,000 Ethereum again. I mean, let's face it. If Bitcoin's going to go down to about $12,000, then Ethereum will go under a, under, under a thousand easy. So I'd say $700 to $800 is what I would see as the overall bottom. Thoughts on Nier? Love Nier. TMG is your mate right now. He's not my mate. I mean, not really, anyway. I mean, obviously, he made a, a, a hit piece on me many years ago. But uh, we since have patched up on that. So, <laughs> Near Protocol, at this present time, looks... The volume is 10 to 1. It's not bad. It's just under 10 to 1. It's not bad. But Near have got fantastic adoption at this point. This is probably not the right. Nine, 809 nodes, relatively decentralized. The near blocks. Hmm. Where is it that they have their actual numbers? Because last I looked, near had 29 million users. Low cost, high speed, effortlessly scalable. Uh, seamless scaling. Because they, they utilize sharding. Cheap, 25 plus million. They're good. Time to finality, 1.2 seconds. That's fucking epic. So I think these guys are great. They're simmering in the background. Look at how many watch lists they're on. They're simmering. They're going to do well overall. So thank you very much for the $2. Zillica, who cares about Zillica? Zillica's dead, man, it's past it. The cuckoo is in the nest. Jesus Christ, thank you very much. 20 pounds. What a beauty. I love it. 
I love you guys. You guys are great. Jesus. So Joe Bars, that was an insane donation. So thank you very much. Then Borsch, twenty dollars, and now an epic one from the cuckoos in the nest. You are, you guys. I'm gonna send you very good karma. You are gonna do well in the next ball run. Okay, you are gonna do well. You deserve to. Uh, Abdi Aiden, I first followed you on Udemy back in 2009 and on YouTube, um, <laughs> that martini guy, <laughs> do you see Impulse X doing a 1000x hypothetically? Uh, I don't know, I don't think so, but what I will say is, is that they are having a transition soon, so they're going to be transitioning, I think there's going to be a new denomination for the token, I don't know what that denomination is. And they are going to be removing the buy-sell tax. So by rights, it should make it easier to access and easier to liquidate. But I don't think it's got a 1,000x potential. I think it would if the Pulse Chain respected this. Pulse Chain community respected this because the Pulse Chain community... Um... Is this true? 188 million addresses. So look, look at that market. That market's fucking enormous. It's huge. The amount of people that sacrificed and therefore get the test net tokens, etc. 188 million. Jesus. So the market's ginormous. So if Impulse X, look, 5,000, if they could just tap into. You know, just just get, you know, even just get like 1% of this. That would be insane. And that's, that's what they need to do. That should be the the goal of, of uh, Impulse X. That should be the goal. To go for marketing to the Hex community. Which I know is fucking difficult because they'll just kick you off. If you go into the Hexcons community, they'll just kick you off. You talk about something that's not from Richard Hart. Um, check space ID coin. I have not looked at that, but I've heard that that was a Binance smart chain. So I'm going to do five more minutes and then I'm going to go into the, um, cryptocurrency I was talking about initially. So, uh, space ID. This is one of, this is one of Binance's IEOs from what I've heard. Decent start. 10,000 watch lists. Let's have a look and see how many hodlers. Why is it not get hold on? Why the fuck is it not giving me the Hmm How weird Oh, here we go. 61,000 address. Oh, that's pretty good, isn't it? 61,000 addresses. Get rid of those. 150 million market cap already. That's ridiculous. This needs to cool off. I don't know what it is, though. Let's have a look. Discover. Discover, register, trade, manage. One place for digital identities. Oh, well, hello. This is a name service then. So, so my understanding is, is that this is a this is purely a digital identity play. So that you have one identity across the blockchains that can be that can directly source all your activities on all blockchains. It just gives you it just gives you it just makes you an entity. And then you just I don't know, like Superman.arb. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Seems interesting. Seems very interesting, actually. Let's have a look and see who's in Space ID. Binance Labs, obviously. That's 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 a, a given. And just Polychain. That's it. Polychain and Binance Labs. It's presently done a twenty-one X. All-time high was a 30x. That's not insane, is it? 
So if it's 150 million, that started off on a on a seven million mark cap. Okay, so that's pretty decent starting point. Do I think it'll go back to that? Probably not. I would imagine this could come down to 15 cents, maybe. <laughs> Difficult to say. Could be at the beginning of its trajectory. But IDs are not... They're not very in. They're kind of in, but they're not very in. Let's have a look and see Galaxy. It's a bigger market cap than Galaxy, and this is the leader in terms of... Uh, this is the leader in terms of identities, I would say. Oh, 37,000 addresses, not as many. But they've got millions of users. 13,000. Okay. So, yeah, so roughly 40, 45, 46, 47,000 hodlers versus Space ID with 61,000. Yeah, this obviously looks quite a bit sexier. I'll have to look into this one. I don't know it fully. I, I've only just just started looking at it. But it doesn't have quite quite as sexy backers as I thought. The um, the volume will will calm down. This is just because it's launched just recently. I want to say two two day one day yeah yesterday. Yeah, so this went up to sixty one cents. So uh, yeah, to me it needs to retrace a lot. It will retrace a lot. It's kind of last in, first out when it comes to the recession. The most recent ones will probably come down the hardest. Particularly if they've gone up quite high. 38, 66. Mm, yeah, not much range there. I would wait for this to come down. Uh, that's quite a high market cap, I would say. Oh my god. Idia! What the fuck? Se 80... Australian dollars. That is supreme. Thank you very much. That's insane. That's insane. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Generosity. You're beginning to arouse my uh, generosity. Now, thank you very much, Ania. I'm sorry I missed the stream, Super. Can't wait to watch back. You've missed a little bit, but not overall, actually. You haven't missed the... The main bit, which I'm going to get to in three minutes. When it when it hits 1.35 on my timer, I will go to it. 1 hour 35. So, yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you very much. And again, in here, I have many, many times. But I am transmitting to you very positive karma. 150x average on your portfolio. So, make sure that you choose well so you get that 150x. I'm giving you that power. See, so but look at Core, core right? I've looked at that. I looked at that before. It was an NFT play. It's, it looks okay, but not, not nothing great. Gala versus Oasis. I mean, they're worlds apart. Gala is a games development company. Oasis is an infrastructure. And at this point, they are still actually very cheap. This is only double the ICO price. So that makes it... I think it's 368 million. 28 million market cap. Still very cheap to me. So, but it's not very well known at this point. It's still very under the radar, but I think it's very sexy. I do think they need to change this website. I think it just looks a bit, I think it looks a bit cheap. Let me see how many hodlers there are. Let me have a look in the explorers. 27,000 addresses. That's really not a lot. That's that's pretty... That's that's not great. But this could end up being a complete... This could end up doing really amazingly. Because let's face it. Oasis is quite new. Only came out in, what, December? It's quite new. And... It recently did go up to 13 cents, so it has retraced quite a lot coming back down. So Oasis is, you know, Gala is well known in the market, much, you know, much more adoption, br brilliant marketing. If you think of games, you tend to think of Gala. 
And Oasis, you know, I don't think anybody thinks of Oasis. It's on 5,000 watch lists. It's, it's, it's nowhere, right? So this has a lot of potential for the future. It's literally um, towards its bottom as far as, you know, kind of uh, knowledge about it is concerned. So there's much more room to the upside. Last question, Clintech CTI. Let me have a look at that. This is a AI project, isn't it? I, I, I said already this is a pile of shit. Um, let's have a look and see how it's done in the last three months. Obviously, this is when the AI narrative was rife. 1.006. This is currently, what? 2x? No, not 2x. About 3... No. 4x from its bottom. But it was... Seven cents. It's come down about three x from there, but this is a shit coin. How is? It? Oh, it's on ten thousand. I thought it was a hundred thousand watches for a second. Now, so what? Um, how many hodlers are there of this? Nine hundred twenty-one. Seven hundred fifty-five. Right. So that's what. Not even two thousand hodlers. That's like that's like sixteen hundred hodlers. Uh, having just gone through a massive AI narrative and it still couldn't pick up the hodlers. So, that's shit. <laughs> it really is a pile of crap. Um, thoughts on Altcoin Daily? Uh, oh, I've just gone over 135. So I'll answer this one question. Thoughts on Altcoin Daily? I do believe that you, Altcoin Daily, Joe Banfield and Joe Perry are the best in the business. I like Altcoin Daily. I like him. You know, he uh, he's great. I, I think he's a great guy. Um, I think that he's balanced, Cl bit clickbaity, but that's how you grow on YouTube. Like, yeah, you know, that's just how you grow. That's how it is. Yeah, you know, if you want to be, if you want to be the biggest YouTuber in cryptocurrency, you got to attract, you got to attract the clicks. Simple as that. You know, so that's just how it is. This is a great question it's from Source. Moonbeam Aptos Arbitrum versus Near Sweet on Optimism. Whew. That is a great question, Source. And uh, a very tough one to choose, actually. I'd probably, on balance, go Glimmer Aptos Arbitrum. On balance. I'd probably go that way. Oh, would I? No, I, I don't know. I, I actually don't know. Wait a minute. I don't know. Uh, apparently, there was a way of doing polls, but I actually don't know what that way is. So, <laughs> so I can't actually do it. But um, I'd love to know what you guys think. Uh, Crypto Gains thinks CTI is a 1,000x gem. Crypto Gains was in my last stream, so I apologize. I did not see Crypto Gains' message, so I appreciate what you said. It was lovely. So thank you very much, Crypto Gains. You keep on. You keep up the good work too. Um, come on, Super. I want two hundred X. Okay, okay. Two hundred X to you, Inia. Two hundred X. Uh, right. Okay. I think I'm going to move on now. I think I'm going to move on. Yes, yeah, super. You don't need Joe and Jerry. I, I love them, though. They're brilliant. Uh, okay. Um, let's move on. So, what cryptocurrency has the potential to 63x between its bottom and the next bull run, the, the height of the next bull run? So, I think that you're going to like this one. So, Yeah, we think you're going to like this one. This is like back to the old Twitch scenario. Uh, so let's go to it. Okay, so here we go. So there are three cryptocurrencies to me that have the potential to be the king of the scaling space. All right. So the first, so I have looked at these three in order to calculate what has the best return on investment if you were to invest soon i don't think it's gonna to be too long you can obviously invest now and i'll show you what the gains would be investing now but um 
Yeah, I wanted to show you which one of these, because these are strong projects, very strong. One of which, which is Polygon, has been around for a while now. And it is considered the blue chip scaling project. Not only is it great for scaling Ethereum, but it's also great because it sits as its own layer one. And it's building its own ecosystem, which the, the other two I'm talking about has the exact same opportunity to do. So let's firstly just go through all of the metrics. Okay, so Polygon was created in 2019. I got into it at IDO. Personally, I have a lot of love for Polygon. I matic as Matic was what it was when I first introduced it to the crypto world. And it's currently now a rank 8 cryptocurrency, which is just phenomenal. So it's a very strong cryptocurrency. People love it. It's built lots of good partnerships. Certainly seen as, you know, for mainstream, mainstream businesses like Meta that has considered getting into the crypto space, they have looked to Polygon as an infrastructure. So that shows you the respect it has. And will continue to have, and this will follow it later on through its, you know, through it, through you know, it's the future of cryptocurrency. When we're looking at cryptocurrency in ten years, it'll still be about. It'll still be probably one of them. Probably would have will be an even better version of what it is now. So anyway, it's it's been very strong. It's currently one dollar nine cents. In the last ninety days, it has been seventy four cents, and its all time high is two ninety two. So in the, la in the last 90 days, it's not even gone up 1x. So it's not actually you know, done immensely great in the last 90 days. But it is still very strong. So their concentration is kind of sidechains and ZK rollups. So they initially started as a plasma sidechain cryptocurrency. Then they, they branched out into ZK rollups. Hence their acquisition of Hermes Network and their latest acquisition of uh, Immutable X or partnership of Immutable X. So they're really looking to be the number one scaling solution in the space. But at the end of the day, all that matters in scaling is speed and cheapness of the actual usage. So anyway, moving on, they've got nearly a million hodlers across their various chains of people of where you can buy Matic. They're on 1.3, what well, nearly 1.4 million watch lists. And they are on, and they have got 225 million wallets. So 225 million wallets has been created on the Matic network. And they have got 462 million in volume. And they are currently a $10 billion market cap. All right. So apparently. Their supply is 8.7 billion tokens. Now, their apparent max supply is 10 billion. Okay, now, they have been inflating by 66%. So I'm not sure if this will stay as the max supply ever. So, but that is the projected max supply. So as far as the amount of hodlers they've, they've got, as a, as a derivative of their market cap, they are, the, each hodler is worth $11,500. To me, it's quite high in terms of value per hodler. In terms of value per wallet, it's $48 per wallet. So as, as far as the amount of people that have created wallets, which therefore feeds into the amount of users it's had in its whole past, then that is low. That's low. Because the average is about $1,300 per wallet. $1,300 per wallet. So Polygon is still doing very well in metrics terms. Volume to market cap, not so great. 23 to 1. It's not amazing. Um, and it's got 87% in circulation, not 100% in circulation. Now, from if you were looking to buy this, if you were looking to acquire Polygon, then this is, a, I would say, a 50 cent cryptocurrency so it has gone down to 74 cents in the last 90 days and it's currently sitting well above a uh, dollar and it's very very strong i don't imagine people will want to sell their polygon depending on how long they've held hold it unless some big fud comes maybe for polygon down the line i can't really see it but with a recession i can see it's coming down to 50 cents like in the height of the recession the two bottoming periods i think 50 percent. i think 50 cents at least it could go down to 35 but 
I'm going to stick to about 50 cents. So I believe that the ball peak could take this to about $25. Now, I know that sounds ridiculous, particularly given the amount of supply, but the, the respect for Polygon and that they keep on exponentially getting bigger, like they get bigger via acquisition. And by trying to dominate the whole space, they're looking to provide every scaling solution that's available, possibly eventually for every blockchain, like multi-chain scaling. So with that in mind, given that this has gone to $3 before, and I imagine that this will also be picked up because it's a blue chip as a potential ETF cryptocurrency as well. So when you're going in via banks, via ETFs, this will probably be on, this will probably have its own ETF via, you know, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, all that lot, BlackRock. So with that in mind, $25, I think, is a bull peak scenario, considering the amount of money flow that's going to... I believe that what's coming up is going to be the most violent bull run we've ever had. And then I think that's going to be it. I think that st I think that cryptos will become more like stocks, and then it'll have much more tame uh, growth and, and multipliers later. So I think the, the next bull run is going to be the biggest, because this is going to be the transition from Wild West to institutionalized, from retail to institutional investors. So I think in that trajectory of this becoming a, a multi tens of trillion um, market and industry, I think that, that Polygon as a blue chip is going to move up with it. So projected market cap with current, with the uh, projected market cap with current supply, that is the uh, 8 billion, that would put $25 a $25 polygon at $218 billion market cap. I think it's achievable. I think it's quite hard to achieve, but this is a top eight cryptocurrency already. So with that in mind, it's going to have the lion's share of money flow. So with that, I don't, so I think you know, Bitcoin is going to be worth about 5 trillion, maybe even, maybe even more uh, come the end of the next bull run. No, probably about, probably about more like three and a half trillion after the next bull run. So two hundred. So everything will move up. Like the goalposts will move up. So you know, currently two hundred eighty-eight, two hundred eighteen billion as a derivative of Bitcoin. This is half of Bitcoin's value, right? So that just seems ridiculous. But Bitcoin's going to be multi-trillion, and I think that Polygon is going to be, you know, could get to anyway about two hundred eighteen with current supply. Now with inflation, if it goes up to its max supply, then it'll be two hundred fifty. Billion. Now, given Solana, which was a relatively new cryptocurrency and, and had a lot of downtime, given that hit 80 billion in the last bull market, and that was the last bull market, the last non institutionalized bull market, I don't think 250 billion is actually that unrealistic. That would make 50x gains if you go if you can take a position at about 50 cents. Uh, gains from today would be 23x. So if you're investing in Polygon today, maximum 23x, in my opinion. So anyway, there we are. That is the one that we already know. The next one... is optimism. So optimism is basically the one looking to chase Polygon down. Optimism is the newest version of scaling solution. Optimistic rollups, which at this present time, Polygon does not have not acquired. They've not acquired an entity that provides optimistic rollups. So it's almost like these two are battling out to be, you know, what is the best solution? And optimism, well, that's already shown great strength in this market, unfortunately, because obviously I love it. Now, this is more like what I would invest in. 2022 coin, it's ranked 65. So it's not outside the top 500, but not every coin I invest in is a, is a very risky coin. A lot of the coins I like to invest in uh, also have quite a good, uh, I would say, I would say have, have very little momentum down as, and, and, and got good momentum up. Asymmetric risk, as it were. And that's what poly, that's what optimism is currently, but I would be looking to get it cheaper anyway. So it's gone down to 88 cents in the last 90 days, but as high as, you know, $3.10. So, what the hell? 
So anyway, so that's wrong. So anyway, yeah, so it has done a 3x since that, you know, since, well, it's currently at a 3x since that low. So again, optimistic roll-ups. This is over halfway the amount of hodlers that Polygon has. Polygon's been around since 2019, since the beginning of 2019. It's basically got four years in the market. And Optimism's only been around half, you know, about, about eight months, seven, eight months. So to have over half already is incredible. Now, it's on way less watch lists. It's not really... I mean, Polygon has been around a lot longer. So by rights, it's had more time to be on watch lists. So it's not that important a metric, but important to know what the metric is. Now, this has got 2.97 million wallets. And it's currently jumped up to 198 million in terms of volume. That's insane. When I was first covering this, this was... 20 million now it's 10x this is this is seen as the real deal its current market cap is six point no it's not it's 699 million with a supply of 314 million currently now this is where the danger comes in for optimism optimism has got ahead of it so this is the projected supply for the 31st of December 2025, which is when I imagine will be around about the peak of the next bull market, potentially. If, if all things being equal, all cycles being equal, that will be the peak of the next bull run. That supply will virtually 10x. There will be 3.5 billion in supply from 314, based on token unlocks. That's a danger point for optimism. So anyway, so value per hodler is much lower, $1,238 per hodler. But it's high on the wallets, $235 per wallet. But again, the average is about $1,400. So this is 7x below the average. So it's still very, very cheap per hodler, uh, per, per wallet. And per hodler, much cheaper, 10x cheaper than Polygon at this point. Volume to market cap, 3.52 to 1 unbelievable that's insane but there's only seven percent in circulation optimal buy price i think it's going to be very difficult to get to uh, the buy price i initially wanted which is 35 cents i did buy optimism at 49 cents if i could rewind the clock back obviously i'd have taken my major position then. but you never know with uh, a highly dilutionary cryptocurrency plus the threat of recession. This could go down to that price, but I'm not holding my head. I'm not holding out for it. So given the uh, supply, yeah. So given the rate of supply being added, I would say this could hit thirty dollars. Now, given it's gone to three dollars, to expect a ten x from there is very realistic. All right, because this has never experienced a bull market. Optimistic roll-ups, you, really, you haven't really been able to see the magic yet of optimistic roll-ups. You've seen it for Polygon because this was around during the last bull market. So you were able to see it was a much better alternative to Ethereum and to use Ethereum at the same time. Optimistic roll-ups, they're superb. They're superb. Currently, with Arbitrum and Optimism, very, very cheap transactions. Not as fast as I would probably hope, but I think it's a work in progress. So that market, so with that, so with that amount of, um, so with with the current supply, thirty dollars would take this to nine billion, which is completely realistic, completely realistic. With the inflated supply, it would be a hundred and seven. Million, it would be 107 billion dollars i i just I, I it's very difficult to see that to be honest but on an upper end that would be a gain of 40x from 75 cents so to me maybe optimism isn't that great if you get it at 75 cents maybe it's not that great as a as an appreciative coin because it's going to have major dilution and inflation now to give you some hope um Avalanche was an 800% inflationary coin, and that's still 50 x from bottom to top. That this, this is very achievable. Remember that 
107 million in terms 107 billion in terms of market cap sounds ridiculous. And to an extent it is ridiculous, but it is achievable because the goalposts will move. And if this manages to really show its you know, its abilities in the next bull run, then it could achieve that $30. And from today that would be a 13x, so pretty shit. Uh, but yeah, on the highest end, I think $30 is what's awaiting optimism. And that could be scuppered because of the fact it's got high inflation. But that inflation can be absorbed if it's got high demand. So what do you think number one is going to be? <laughs> so the cryptocurrency that I think actually has the best potential is Arbitrum. Arbitrum. Okay, so Arbitrum it has... It has entered the market at a very hot 37 rank. Now, Arbitrum is a 2023 coin. Now, what I found looking and doing my analysis from bottom to top of the last bull market is the closer you release to the next bull market, the most likelihood of the biggest pump. The reason being is because you're fresh in the mind and you haven't had a load of bear market rallies that has shown a little bit of an instance of how well it can do. Right? So it's completely virgin going into the next bull market. Now, Arbitrum at this point is way too hot. So don't think for one second I'm saying buy it now. But this has gone down to $1.10. I don't know what it is currently. $1.10. And it's presently one twenty four. Hopefully it's not too much more than that. Um, so it hasn't really done much of a multiplier since the low. Okay, so it's come down from $11.80, which was its all-time high. It's come down 10x and has, has not even really gone up. So at this point, it's come out to a quite tepid market. Again, optimistic roll-ups. Now, these guys have a bigger stranglehold on Ethereum volume. They're, they're, they're already the fourth biggest blockchain in terms of total value locked. So that gives it an advantage over over both optimism and Polygon. This is the this is just behind Binance Smart Chain, Ethereum, and Tron as the biggest as the largest blockchains in the in the industry. But it's not currently priced as that, is it? Because the market cap is only 1.5 billion versus Polygon's 10 billion. So by rights, Arbitrum may be undervalued compared to a Polygon to an extent. If you're talking about the amount of value locked up in the ecosystem, it's actually not on par at this present time. Now, considering that Arbitrum is basically just out, they, like Optimism, did a fantastic game theory way of building a community. All right, via the airdrop. And I'm delighted to say I was in the airdrop for Arbitrum. Not that much, actually, but I don't do a lot of DeFi, so I didn't expect a lot. So anyway, so 265,000 hodlers already. Half of what Optimism has had seven months in. All right, so this is just base spec. The amount of people that got airdrop plus the... Uh, and, and this is not even including all the people that have claimed because not everybody has claimed yet. So until they claim and it goes into their wallet, they are not a hodler on chain. So this still has the potential to go up, but it's it's you know it's virtually halfway to optimism at this point, and it's over a quarter of the way to Polygon at this point. So it's doing incredibly well despite being just a day old. So on thirty nine thousand watch lists, which is a huge amount considering this has not even been on Coin Market Cap. Um, so they have already decimated optimism. In terms of wallets. So they're on nearly 4 million wallets. So since uh, since the airdrop activities in the last month, there's been a shit ton more wallets added. This has eclipsed optimism. At one point they were going, they were basically head to head. And Arbitrum has, has boomed ahead. And now this is a new chain. And Arbitrum, I would say, is considered more blue chip than optimism. I mean, the rank does reflect it. But I would say Arbitrum is considered definitely more blue chip than Optimism. I would say that you are more likely to launch with Arbitrum now, it's a, it's a token, than Optimism. But then again, Optimism ha is, is currently the base chain for uh, Coinbase, right? They've developed 
on on optimism with optimism so by rights optimism is still very strong but arbitrum i would say is stronger now the volume i wouldn't say is necessarily indicative of i would uh, uh, of its reasonable market action because it's just come out and typically when a coin just comes out it is at its hottest so this has got a 2.6 billion dollars in volume, which obviously eclipses uh, both Polygon and Optimism at this point, you know, by a long way. So that's not indicative. So I wouldn't really take too much into consideration there. So it's 1.59 uh, billion in market cap, which is quite high, but about what I'd expect at this point, having just come out and then got decimated. It's about what I'd expect. 1.5. This is good. This is good market. Cap. It's cheaper than near. At this point, and I would say more people are probably more. Most people will probably find Arbitrum more sexier than Near because Arbitrum's just just been launched, and it's you know, and it's and there's so much potential. So current supply one point two seven five billion at this point, with a projected supply of uh, eight billion. I think that's eight billion. Yeah, eight billion. Uh, by the twenty, by the thirty first of December, twenty twenty five. So this is going to inflate a lot. It's going to be near its max though at that point, but it's still going to inflate a lot. It's going to be eighty six percent in circulation at that point. So value per hodler at this point is is still half the price of Polygon but more expensive than Optimism at this point. So I would say they need to build that value still. That's not a bad starting point. $6,000 per hodler. It's not a bad starting point, but it will build. There'll be more hodlers in the next three months. There'll be way more hodlers in the next three months. Value per wallet, $399. So still not that bad, actually. $399 per wallet. Still more expensive than these two, but give it time. Uh, I think that Arbitrum has the potential to go down a bit more. Volume-wise, to market cap, well, at this point, it's not really a true reflection. So it's less than one-to-one. -one. So it's actually positive on the volume side, which is very rare. So currently in circulation, 13%. So better tokenomically than Optimism at this point. In fact, if you think about it, they're about the same. If... if Optimism had a thirteen percent fully thirteen uh, percent diluted supply um, diluted market cap, then it would be about the same price actually because it's double. Yeah, it's about the same, about the same actually. Now you think about it, it's about the same. So my optimal buy price for Arbitrum's forty cents. It's the newest out, and therefore has not had time to build the resilience. There'll be so many people that will have. Tokens in their wallet they didn't have to pay for. They they got it via an airdrop participating in the Arbitrum blockchain or Arbitrum yeah, activities. So when the crunch comes to the crunch, with optimism, a lot of people have sold their airdrop tokens because it went out to $6 and then it came down to, you know, 42 cents. So people sold off their optimism tokens. Whereas for Arbitrum... There's still a lot of unsold tokens, which when a recession comes, people will be like, oh, I better sell, I'll sell this because I, I didn't even buy it anyway. So it's just easy sell, easy profit. So I think by rights, that could bring Arbitrum down to 40 cents. So Bull Peak, I would say $25 for this one, which with its current supply, we get a $31 billion cryptocurrency which isn't that is, is actually very realistic but there is going to be a lot of inflation so that actually would put it at 215 billion projected market cap with inflation by the end of 2025 i still put this as not doing as well as polygon but it will have more value locked it will have way more projects at that point, it'll be a more developed ecosystem, in which case 215 million, I think 215 billion is very, very realistic. When you consider that Optimism and Arbitrum are basically the same market cap right now, if they were on like-for-like -like supply you know, circuit in circulation, 
Now, I think Arbitrum's going to absolutely bomb ahead and still be cheaper, possibly, than Optimism. So, therefore, 63x, I think, is, is realistic. Probably very optimistic, but realistic. If you can get it at 40 cents, I've got some buys for Arbitrum at a much uh, a, a discounted uh, a discounted prices going down to 40. So I hope to pick it up over time. But seeing how Optimism did, I think this will have more of a drop. But I also think that you're not actually... I don't think that buying today or buying at about $1.10 or $1, I think that that's a good price to buy at anyway. But for the optimal price, 40 cents. Probably go lower than that. And that will put less pressure on it having to achieve $25. So gains today, if it was to achieve that price, would be 20x. So I would wait. I would wait personally. Yeah, so there we are, people. So I want to know from you, what do you guys think of Optimism? I'd be actually quite key uh, of Arbitrum. And which is your favorite of the three? I would love to actually say, I would love to do a poll, but I can't. So I'd love to know what your guys' thoughts are on it. Is the SWE airdrop finished? I don't actually know. Thoughts on Get Protocol? I talked about that in the last stream, and I, I don't like those types of coins. No, like DApps, they've got to be pretty good DApps in order to in order to be investable. I prefer Unificat. Like, don't use it as an opportunity to just shell your shit coin. Like, what do you genuinely think is the best of the three? And what do you what do you want to buy? Arbitrum is my fave and price should be above 260 as compared to Optimism. So I've actually uh, created my battle sheet, which is this, which I've shown a few times. And uh, has Arbitrum gone down any? Oh, for God's sake. No, Arbitrum's gone up a little bit, 126. So yeah, so I like Arbitrum a lot, actually. And uh, it... I'm surprised at its market cap. I'm actually a bit surprised by its market cap. So what I want to do... Let me just see what this would be. So Optimism's market cap divided by 7 times 13. Oh, what the fuck? Divided by 7 times 13. What the fuck? Would make it 1.3 billion. Right? 1.3 billion. So yeah, so roughly it's only it's only like three well actually that's quite a that's the market cap of an entire coin. But that's three hundred million difference between Arbitrum and Optimism. If they if they had the same amount of if they had the same amount of tokens unlocked at this point, then uh then yeah, then then Arbitrum would still be more expensive. If we have a look in chain ranking, look at that. Arbitrum, 2.3 billion. 2.3 billion in value locked. And Matic has got not half, but virtually half of that. And yet Matic is a 7.3 uh, market cap to total value locked. Whereas for Optim, whereas for Arbitrum, actually at this point it's in the positive. So one one point six divided by two point three, zero point six nine. So this is zero point six nine, which puts it roughly on par with Optimism. And one of the best value locked to market caps there is on this list. In fact, Akala, but that's not really a fusion, but that's part of shit. So when you look at most of the top blockchains, you know, basically you have got a really good you've got a really what seems like an undervalued cryptocurrency. Because it's 1.6, 2.3, and yet this shit, this shit coin, um is roughly on par 1.1 1.13 market cap to total value locked and it's a shit coin it's a pile of shit 
So Arbitrum has got Arbitrum's. In my opinion, Arbitrum's got a, a big upwards trajectory either way. But just the better price you can get it at, the better the trajectory. But I've got to be honest. I am slightly surprised that Arbitrum is its current price. Because I was saying the other day when 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 you were asking me in the chat. What, what do you think the value of Arbitrum would be? I was saying about 1 billion is where I see it. So the fact that it's at 1.6 billion is actually not bad at all. Considering it's got more value locked in it than, than most blockchains like Moonbeam, like Near, like Aptos, all of them. It's killing it currently. It, it's, the, it's the most utilised. Crypto Mel, got a nice airdrop and holding some for the bull. Good idea, I, I personally believe. Like, it would only be worth, and this is what I believe will happen, is that people will sell it, not because they don't believe in it, but because if you sell, if you sell it, uh, for, uh, and you didn't have to really, you didn't have to buy it, you didn't, you, let's say you got 5,000 tokens, and you didn't have to actually, and, and it's worth today, you know, what, five, you know, $5,200, you didn't actually have to, you didn't have to but pay for that. So if you sell it, you can buy it. Let's say it does go down to 50 cents. You can get over double, 2.3 times the amount of Arbitrum that you had with free money. And then hold it for the for dear life. But uh, I think that this is actually a very good price for Arbitrum. I'm surprised it, it did settle at this point. And I think it's a lot to do with timing and the, the drawbacks of... Of, of, you know, of being so heavily airdropped. This was so heavily airdropped. So that's the drawback. This will, this did have a massive sell-off. You have to be very, very fast. Claim, sell. Most of the exchanges were offering it. You get a lot of decent money on the on the come down. If you had five thousand, that's ten. You know, that's that could have been fifty k if you could, if you sold at the at the best time. So that is why it's come down a lot. But I've got to say, I think it's at a good price. I actually think it's at a fair value. I've got to be honest. Um, unification. Yeah, but who, who's ever heard of unification? Like, no one. Still own and holly, holding Polygon, so that's still my fave. I find it hard to invest at such high market cap. So only looking for Optima. I feel like they are not worth investing in as I have enough safe crypto holdings. Yeah, I mean, the reason I love this, Arbitrum, is because it's a new coin. It's virginal. You've not seen where it can go to. And I've loved optimism, but it's run away too much. And I think a lot of the reason why optimism ran away is because Arbitrum wasn't out. So people were looking for a decent scaling solution that had a lot of upside potential. But actually, diluted to the extent that, that Arbitrum is, it's there about the same price, actually. So wait for this to come down just like you'd wait for optimism to come down you're essentially getting it. if you got it at 40 cents that's like getting optimism um at about at about 80 about 70 cents mm. yeah about 70 cents yeah so what would you rather get optimism uh, arbitrum at 40 cents or optimism at 70 cents I've got to say Arbitrum because, you know, they're, they're so early. There's so much potential. Arbitrum, then Optimism. I will not buy Matic. As you said once, Matic already did a massive run-up. Yeah, it has. It's done, I think, current price of, of Matic. So I got an ICO. So 110 divided by 0.024. No. Not 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 too far. It's currently four hundred and fifty eight x from its, you know, from its IDO price, and it has done a thousand x. So yeah, so yeah, I I I've made I've made a lot of bank from this, but I still see it got upside. It's got upside potential. It's just it's just one of those coins that just hit, one of those coins that just hit they hit it perfectly. You know, you you could get it back in the early days when it wasn't it wasn't you know, coins weren't getting airdrop. There wasn't that much there wasn't that much volume in the market. It wasn't as big a market as it was, and it's just one of those ones that have made a fantastic trajectory. And modern day Aptos, Sui, Optimism, Arbitrum, 
ZK Sync, Starknet, modern day, a groomed cryptocurrency is never going to come out at a 5 million market cap anymore. This is where it happened. You know, Arbitrum, its fair market value was 50 cents. So if we get... Yeah, I think it's it's like it's to, it's like initial value was fifty cents. So if we get the circulating supply and see what it was, it was already a six hundred thirty-seven million dollar cryptocurrency right from the outset. So you are never gonna be able to get. I mean, obviously people have got it for free, right? They've got it for free, <laughs> but that's not the point. You know, they only got a certain amount, 5,000, let's say. Um, but, uh, yeah, you would never have been able to get this a massive run uh, and get a massive run up. But I do think this has got a good upside potential later because it's the newest. How come Metis and Boba aren't on the list? Because they're, they're not in the same ilk. They're not in the same ilk, being honest. Like, they're, they're ones that are good speculatively, but they're never going to have the adoption. These are groomed cryptocurrencies. Groomed means very little, very little downside, very high upside. The others could die. So to me, the ones worth investing in. Well, yeah, they don't necessarily have a good upside potential, but they're very good. They're, they're not bad for wealth generation. They're, they're not, they're, I mean, 63x. I think there is that potential for that to happen. 63x is fucking insane. Space Peace, I've already, I've already looked at Space ID. Zen Mints on Phantom, check it out. Yeah, I know. Um, Back in the day, ridiculous coins like, like POO coin were doing 100,000 exits. Yeah, that was a beautiful day. And that is kind of what I could expect for maybe Arbitrum cryptocurrencies so that's what i'm on the lookout for now okay and that is what i am going to consider so really why uh, the likes of let's say pancake swap did really well is because binance smart chain em emerged as one of the fastest blockchains that were available to actually make make coins on in 2021 early 2021 and anything that came out on binance smart chain absolutely shot and pwo coin was one of them and so was pancake swap. This is insane. It went like thirty cents to like forty dollars. Um, and that's what I'm looking for with Arbitrum. So there's two opportunities. Obviously, Arbitrum at a better price, but then again, it's also the Arbitrum the Ar it's also the Arbitrum chain as well. Let's just have a look. There we are, Arbitrum ecosystem. So this is where you look for like the small cap opportunities. Maybe not here, but maybe on that there's going to be some emerging cryptocurrencies soon that uh, that that will that will make a run up. So keep an eye out for that. Look out for the pancake swap of. I mean, I guess the pancake swap for um, Arbitrum is kind of GMX anyway. But you know, back at the beginning of of. Binance Smart Chain, Dodo was like the was like one of the bigger exchanges for DEXs for Arbitrum. And then Thingy came out. Um uh Pancake Swap, and that absolutely shot through. So Vela Exchange, this is an Arbitrum one. I like this one. Somebody actually brought this up in a Twitch stream when it was like 2.30. And if I if I if I could go back, I'd probably get get in this. But I think it'll probably go down to about $1. But this is another one. This is basically a, a cheap version of GMX. But it hasn't officially launched yet. So that's where the opportunity to make gains is. But it doesn't have great investors, actually. Let me just have a look. <clears throat> There's no information on its investors. Um, but... But it's ranked outside the top. Or is it? Let me just have a look. It's a new coin, remember? It's a new coin. It's a narrative play on Arbitrum. Now, is it? Uh, and 
but it doesn't have the sense. That's that. That's not there. Thirty-six. Okay, so it's roughly in the late stages of. It's just just inside the top five hundred. So, I think that's probably a better play than GMX because GMX is right already ranked seventy-four. So yeah, Vela exchange could be good. Could be interesting. So uh, yeah, there we are. Hold on a minute. Let me just get rid of some idiot. Uh, oh, have I gotten to the bottom? Did he talk about Arbitrum yet? <laughs> 100k market cap with 5XTL and fresh. What's that? Why is that Vito? Which I imagine you're Kim Vito from Twitch. Um, with that logic, Sheba has not seen its moment then. Which logic? I don't think Sheba has. I don't think Sheba has, you know, done its ultimate top yet. I think Zen will 100x easily. Yeah, I do. I think it will at some point. So what about Vesta Finance? Six million. Ooh. Let me have a look and see if it has any potential. It looks shit already. Just looking into it, it looks shit. Enables you to borrow against the crypto so for selling them. It's DeFi. Uh, stable coin. Borrow swap. Let's have a look. 26.7k followers. Let's see if this is real. It doesn't look real. Maybe it is real. 39 likes. That's something for something that is literally at the top of its relevance right now. 1500, 1000. Yeah, this this is this is really wank uh Twitter metrics which almost shows that they kind of bought their <laughs> bought their followers. Let's have a look at the Explorer. What? That can't be right. That can't be right. There's no way. There's no way there's that many. This must somehow be... This must somehow have something that is tracking the actual... This can't be right. 262,000 addresses. It makes no sense. They're on 1,000 watch lists. They've got 10,000 members. That does not make sense. That cannot be. They've basically got the same amount of hodlers that Arbitrum has. And I can't. That can't be right. Um, let me just have a look. They've got less. This can't be right. Something must be wrong here, but it can't be because it's on chain. Something isn't right about that, though. Two hundred sixty-two thousand addresses, an arbitrum. Has 257. Okay. Doesn't seem right. If it does have that many, then that's fucking insane. But nothing marries up. They haven't got a massive Twitter following. 
and not much in the way of actual hmm interesting that's interesting though i'll give you that i'll give you that whoever said that source Uh, thank you for all the hard work, Michael. Legend from Vin... Vin DXB! Love it! Thank you for, um, very much for the AED. 20 AED. Is that... I think I know what that is. Yeah, Dirham's, yeah. <laughs> I just didn't know what the A, A was. Well, I knew it was Emirates. Arab Emirates Dirhams. Right, okay, cool. Thank you very much for that. Are you in Dubai or something? So Shiba might 10x, not this year, of course, but two years down the road. Yeah, yeah, Shiba could easily do that. Oh, we had to buy a small amount of tokens to join the Arbitrum Guild. Really? Well, that was a fantastic way of game theorying the hodlers. I was not. I was not even aware of it. I've never heard of it. Yeah, Zen pump forty four percent. Yes, it did. It did indeed. I has to Google the amount. No, I'm not going to Google the amount. It's it's awesome. Whatever the case. Um. Okay, how long have I been on now? Two hours twenty five. Fucking hell! How do I stay on this long? I think I'm just so used to um, Twitch. Right, okay. I think that's going to make it. Do you think Metastrike will survive? It can. The thing is, is that... It, I mean, what 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 can enable Metastrike to survive is that it's relatively unique in the gaming. Because what I've noticed is a lot of shitty space gaming games. Whereas Metastrike is more like a kind of Call of Duty game. So it seems pretty... It's got pretty uh, commercial, commercial gameplay... So that's more like an average, you know, kind of amount of hodlers. That's quite a lot of hodlers, actually. Mind you, it's Binance Smart Chain, so it's it's a bit more understandable. But, um, yeah, I think it could do well. It'll just need marketing at the right time. How hard is a 25x? It's, not, it's actually not very difficult, as long as two things. Number one, you invest at roughly uh, as close to the bottom of the market as possible. So I think that if you bought in December, you'll probably get a few 25xs. But um, obviously waiting for the recession, you'll get the best, I imagine. You'll get the absolute best of the best. But look, uh, all these coins, I mean, these are what you would class as decent coins, right? And what, what I tend to cover on this channel is decent coins. So by rights, 25x should be a cinch, right? So um, 25x is not difficult to get. It's really not. As long as you invest at the low point, as long as you do that, the, the trajectory bottom to top of bear, top of bull is immense. 25x, you'll get 25x before the bull market even starts, really. You know, a lot of coins had already made their run up from this bottom to the, uh, to September, between, between the bottom, most of these bottoms were March 2020, by September... 2020 they had already a lot of them already 5x 5x 6x you know some of them had even done 20x or so you know hex had already done a mega epic one like from this point 0.0002 i got into it in august and by that time it had already gone up to 0.003 so it had already gone up like 15x by august so it just goes to show the, the bottom really does unlock magical gains. That's why I'm waiting. That's why I'm one of the worst. <laughs> Unification. Fun, 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 fun. <laughs> I love it. Um... <laughs> Hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> 135,000 market cap, 30,000 volume. <laughs> uh, it's conversion still nice. Conversion's dead. Fucking just, it's just gone. Just, you know, to me, I just, I, I, I spent a lot of money on convergence. It, it, it didn't, it didn't work out. 
didn't work out. The timing was all wrong. The thing with convergence is, is that I got in like like there was a DeFi a DeFi bull rally in between February and April last year. And convergence came out in April. It came out literally at the end of the rally. So you, you kind of missed you kind of just missed it a bit. It kind of went up. I can't remember how much it went up. Went up a little bit. About five five something X. Maybe it went up a bit more than that. But then it just kind of the DeFi just died totally. Yeah, even pancakes sort of went down 10x. Like everything really, really shot down after the DeFi bull market. And it was a DeFi coin. So it just never made the it just never made the transition. That's the problem. But um it is it's just one of those things, you know, not every coin can win. Simple as that. Um <laughs> I love it, Vito. Thank you very much. I I will try. I will try. Um, Super, why do you dislike so much XRP? I just think it's disgusting. I just think it's a piece of shit, centralized crap cryptocurrency owned by its top executives. And it doesn't fucking move. Look. Save for a couple of little rallies. Is is let's just have a look. Uh look. If you got in in twenty twenty, you bought in at twenty four cents, it went up to one seventy five. <laughs> what the fuck is that? What six X If you were looking to quit your job investing in one of the top cryptocurrencies, which is XRP in terms of market cap, and you invested at the bottom, and you made a six X. What the fuck was the point? Like, it's a, it's, it's heyday was back here when I invested in it. I got into it at 0.008 in March. I got in at 0.08, right about here, yeah, right about here. And I sold it at 38, uh, to be fair, I, I, I could have done better. I sold it at 38 cents. And then subsequently, it did go up to $3. So I would have made a shit ton of money hodling it, but I didn't. But yeah, those days are gone. Now it's a centralized shit coin. It's a pile of crap. It goes nowhere. And so what if it, and you have to rely on it winning this this SEC case to see it going anywhere. Hopefully it will be the end of this coin. But I doubt it, unfortunately. Um V Chain, yeah, I like V Chain. V Chain's good, but it's not sexy. But it'll still do well. Less than 50x is meaningless. <laughs> it is a bit. This is what we come to crypto for. 50x's at least. Uh check crypto hulk. Yeah, what a prick. Five thousand dollars is never gonna fucking happen. It'd be lucky to get a five dollars. Biggest load of bullshit ever. Why would anybody get involved in a cryptocurrency that is mostly held by its founders? Stupid. What do you think of Raoul? Right, I'll probably look at this one as the last one. Um, what? Very really fucking human. Well, so I can look at this wank stain website. Real casino, real yields, real bets. What a sack of shit. Let's have a look and see Arb Inu. How's that doing? Did that ever go anywhere? Not really. Let me have a look at the explorers. Is that it? 4,800 addresses for its main meme coin. That's wank. How the fuck is it doing nearly 1 million in volume with that few address? Well, actually, that's not that, it's not that bad. If I think about it, let's have a look at what's, what does Stratos have these days? 6,000. Let's have a look. What does Saito have these days? Saito, I think last I checked, had about 11,000, maybe 9,000. 8,100 there. And then another 8,000. So that's got 16,000 users. So yeah, so... Arbinu's okay, but I'd expect that to do much better. All right, okay. I think I'd better go now. I'll go much better than crappy XRP. Exactly, Danny. Exactly. Algo is like getting in the better version of a 
high throughput, low transaction fee cryptocurrency. It's pretty much exactly the same as XRP, only it's just 10,000 times better. Swing be interviewed by Chainlink. Don't know what that means. Right, okay. I'm going to make a move now. How many bull runs do you think we got? Well, we're going to have multiple bull runs. Like, bull run, bull run wise. I mean, like, in terms of bull market to bear market. This always going to happen. It's just... Where do you get the violence in upside? You, you probably those days are probably limited. The more the more adopt. You see, this is why I say it, right? As far as I'm concerned, we're we're seeing the end of days regarding the cryptocurrency market as we know it. Twenty three thousand cryptocurrencies. That's not that's not going to be the case after the next bull run. Bull run. This is going to be the last bull run where you've got multitudinous cryptocurrencies. After a while, there's going to be a proper index. Proper brokers, proper on ramps, uh, banking, all of that stuff. The institution is going to be in, right? And they are going to. That's going to be how you buy cryptos, and you're going to most of the shit is going to be gone, right? So, um, so this is going to be the last time. Next bull run, most of these projects are not going to be around. So this is going to be the last bull run to me, and because of. You know, the coins that are still going to be around. The, the next bull run is going to take them up to a critical mass. The next bull run after that, they won't have as much upside potential. So I think that the next bull run is going to be the last. As much as it pains me to say it, I think it's going to be the, la the last violent one. And then after that, it's just going to be like the stock market. It'll be a bit better than the stock market, but ultimately... It'll be like the stock market. You'll only be allowed to, in you'll only be allowed to invest a few like, thousand... You won't be able to invest your big amounts anymore. It'll just, it'll just be different. It'll be different. With CBDCs, it's going to be controlled and it's going to be scrutinized. And, nah, this is not going to be the same anymore. So this is the last real bull run to me. This will be it. This is getting the institutions in at the lowest price, but the actual like on-ramps and regulation, that's going to be settled by the, the bull run after the next one. But this is going to be an institutional bull run. They're going to buy the shit out of stuff. There's going to be ETFs. There's going to be massive inflows into um, a lot of good coins, and then that's and then yeah, and then after that it will it will be a formal like the stock market. That's how I see it. Anyway, people, love you lots. I hope I didn't make you feel too depressed there. <laughs> Glimmer sweet Arb Doge chain versus near Aptos optimism. Hello, <laughs> fuck, you're good with these source. I've got to say. Um, I would say Glimmer Arb Swee Doge Chain easy. Yeah, yeah, easy. But it's difficult to say unless I knew what Swee's uh, you know, what their um, what's it called is gonna be starting market cap. All right, people, love you lots. You're amazing. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next time. It is lights out. Or.